Hi, I'm Max Mason. Max Mason, another baseball season has begun, and you have a wonderful new show. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, I'm excited with the weather getting warmer and having the games every evening is a nice continuity of the years past and present. I'm still riding on a high a bit from last year's surprising national championship with the Phillies. In this show, I tried to steer a little bit away from contemporary events, but have it speak to more of the spirit of baseball that grandparents and parents passed on to me. So there's some paintings here based on old photographs and also out of my imagination, which is pretty much fixed in the late 50s, early 60s in terms of the style of the uniforms and the stadiums. What I have in my imagination based on when I was a kid of about 12 years old. It formatted my hard drive, and so that's what I tend to paint. Even if I'm doing a contemporary scene, I really don't copy exactly what I see, but I sort of put it back in that time. There's no denying that these are pretty nostalgic paintings. For me, there has never been a greater baseball player than Roberto Clemente, having been a kid in Pittsburgh when he was at his high point before he died, giving his life to help Nicaraguan earthquake survivors. When I saw him in one of your paintings, I just almost cried. Well, it's funny. Percentage-wise, it takes up a very small part of this one painting, but I tried to have Roberto's presence be in the painting. His spirit definitely infuses the whole Pittsburgh baseball community. Your paintings have so much visual information. Do you do these from photographs, drawings, being at the games, sneaking out on the field and lying between players' feet as they're batting? How do you do these? Well, it's really all of that. I do look at photographs. I tend to copy parts of photographs that have information that I either can't make up or just want to include. I go to games. There's some sketches in this show that are more like quick figure drawings that are done from life. They have a much more loose gestural feel in the style, I would say, of 30s American realist painting, the Ashcan school particularly. I love that school of painting, and I'm really not particularly partial to photorealism, but as I may have denied using photographs in the past because of a misplaced idea that somehow this cheapened them, now I actually try to even celebrate the photographers. The Pittsburgh painting, the foreground figures on the right are all from a photograph by George Silk that was on the cover of Life magazine. Fans in the Tower of Learning at the University of Pittsburgh, which overlooked Forbes Field, the old Pirate Stadium. And there's a fabulous photograph of these people cheering. For sure, it was set up by George, the photographer, because who knows if they could really see what's happening in the game and they all have their arms raised up as if Bill Mazeroski had just hit the home run. Now, perhaps he had hit that famous home run and they were all jubilant, but I tend to doubt it. I think George made the photograph more interesting. One of the features of your work that is so alluring to me is the dynamic movement in them. Non-baseball fans think of baseball is incredibly snoozy, but you have such dynamism. How do you compose these figures in the frame to get that? It happens very organically. It's like gesture drawing with a figure. The best figure drawings, I think, start off with a quick line drawing that points of vectors and has emphasis and weight, but it doesn't have in particular details. And so that's how I compose the paintings. And then it's a matter of finding intel information that fleshes those out. Sometimes you have a very particular idea. Here's what it's going to be. But mostly the paintings change from the initial conception. There is usually an aha moment where you go, oh, if I put this over here, that's going to reflect on the other side. So there's a bouncing back and forth. And of course, the skies generally have contrails and airplanes in them. And so I like to have a sense of being surrounded by a combination of man-made and natural things like the lives most of us live. It's not one or the other, it's all of it. And so the baseball is a way to focus and simplify the energy, but the paintings are full of all sorts of crazy stuff. I try to have it not get overwhelming with information, but always be a little bit surprising. COVID must have done a number on you. People couldn't congregate. We look at these paintings and you have thousands of people, some of them little blips and blops. Can you talk about the crowds? Did you miss them during COVID? 
COVID was obviously a terrible time for all of us for different reasons. Besides the physical health aspect of it, there's also the mental health and the fact that around 2020, couldn't even pass on the street without being afraid. And I think fear of the other is a terrible calamity, a disease, with people being afraid and having to protect themselves. One of the joys of the ball game is being all crammed together with the different types, racial, sexual, economic backgrounds, everything. And it's just a joyous throng. The joy of life for me is the joyous throng. Poets have talked about that. What's your favorite baseball poem? My favorite baseball poem that I have memorized, sort of a bar trick, is, of course, Casey at the bat. Go ahead. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville at nine that day. The score stood four to two with but an inning more to play. So when Cooney died at second and Burroughs did the same, a pallor wreathed the outlook of the patrons of the game. They said if only Casey could get a whack at that, we'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey and so did Jimmy Blake. The former was a Lulu and the latter was a fake. And it does go on from there. <laughs> and what's the last line? The last line is, there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. <laughs> Max Mason has definitely hit a home run with this show, and I recommend everybody go see it. Thank you very much, John. It's a pleasure. <laughs> you can catch Max Mason's wonderful play ball exhibition at Gross McLeaf through May 27th, 2023. 